Hello, and welcome to Tech Cubicle on SAP. In this multi-part video series, I'm going to show a complete end-to-end -end demonstration of the power of Ansible Playbooks for SAP, the free open source automation capabilities brought to you by the SAP Linux Labs community. Follow me through the process of building a working SAP NetWeaver ABAP system running on the SAP ASE database, all hosted in the Microsoft Azure public cloud. And don't worry, you will see that the type of system could easily be SAP S for HANA. The same steps will apply with almost exactly the same inputs. In part one, link above, I described what Ansible is. Then I went through the capabilities of the Ansible playbooks for SAP. Together, we went through the process step by step, setting up and building out our required infrastructure, including networking, and we built our virtual machine to host Ansible. I'll put a link to part one above here, so go and check that video out if you've not seen it yet. In this second part, we will build onto our Azure infrastructure. We flow through the setup and execution of Ansible playbooks for SAP, which will deploy our SAP system. Let's get started. Step 14, set up Ansible. Ensure that your Ansible virtual machine is started from the Azure portal. Open up the PuTTY SSH client on your local laptop. Enter the public IP address of the Ansible virtual machine and click Open. Log into the Ansible VM as the Ansible user and password. The first thing I'm going to do is update the Ubuntu Linux operating system software package repositories. I use the command sudo apt-get update. This ensures that I have outbound internet access from the Ansible VM, and it also asks the APT package manager to update the local software repositories, which will allow me to find the required software in a later step. It's a bit like asking Windows to check for updates, but not actually install them. Next, when I built this virtual machine, I used username and password to connect. I need to generate a public-private key that can be used for SSH connection. I check that no key already exists by listing any files called id underscore rsa in my user's home directory. I use command ls minus l dollar home ssh id underscore rsa. No files are found, so I'm able to create a new key pair. I use command ssh keygen minus trsa minus n minus f dollar home dot ssh id underscore rsa. Now I have a key pair. I need to tell the SSH service that I'm authorized to log into my own system as the Ansible account using my SSH key. I do this by trusting my own public key. The trust is created by appending my public key to the special file called authorized underscore keys, which is stored in my home directory. I use command cat home.ssh id underscore rsa.pub and I put it to the authorized keys file. Next, I test the trust is working by using SSH to connect back into the Ansible VM, like a loopback, using the key. I use command SSH Ansible user at LNX Ansible 01. It prompts me to confirm that I trust the target server I am connecting to, and of course I do. I'm in. I have now connected back into the same virtual machine as the same user, but instead using trusted public key authentication. I can exit from the connection name. The Ansible playbooks for SAP have a dependency on the Python programming language. Let's check the current version of the system installed Python environment. I used command python3 minus minus version. Excellent. So we already have version 3.10.12 installed because we chose correctly to use Ubuntu 22.04 as our virtual machine image. To be able to install some of our required dependencies, we need the Python package manager, which is called pip. I use command python3 minus m pip minus v. This confirms that pip is not currently installed in our existing Python environment. So I download the pip installer. I use command curl and then the HTTP address. This will download the installer to a file called getpip.py. Now we run the pip installer. I use command python3 get minus pip dot py minus minus user. We can ignore the warnings. The message at the end tells us it has been deployed for our user account only, not a system-wide deployment. One of the recommendations is to create a virtual Python environment to provide consistency even after patching the operating system. If we didn't use a Python virtual environment, then patching the operating system could introduce changes to Python that could break Ansible and our playbooks. I use command sudo apt install python 3.10 vmv. Notice that this is an operating system package and is specific to our version of Python.
installation completes. I check the value of the variable $home. I now create the Python virtual environment and route it to the subdirectory inside my home directory, which is called playbooks underscore SAP. I use command python3 minus m vm $home playbooks underscore SAP. To add the location to my execution environment path, I need to run the activate script. I use command source $home playbooks underscore SAP slash bin slash activate. This will need to be done each time I initially log into the virtual machine before I run the Ansible playbooks. I didn't do this at this point in the demo, but we can go ahead and ensure it gets executed each login. I add a line to my Linux login profile to do this activation process automatically each time I log in. I use command echo source dollar home playbooks and SAP slash bin slash activate and I output it to the dot profile file. Going back to the prior step, let's check where Python is now executed from. I use command which python. You can see it's running from my virtual python environment. Checking the version of python, I use command python minus minus version. The same version as came with the operating system because it was deployed from that version. Now we have the virtual environment, I need to install Ansible and also the Ansible playbooks for SAP prerequisite python libraries. I talked about these in part one. They get installed using pip. I use command python minus m pip install ansible core beautiful soup 4 lxml requests pass lib jamez path. Done. Our demo environment is hosted on Azure. To allow Ansible playbooks for SAP to make API calls to Azure, it needs the Python SDK and some other Python dependencies. All of those requirements are in a text file stored on GitHub on the internet. We can tell pip to install libraries by giving it a URL location of a text file, which is a list of libraries. I use command python minus m pip install minus r and then the URL. This essentially causes pip to read the URL to get the list and then from the list, it goes and downloads and installs the libraries. You could put the URL into your web browser to view it if you like, it's just text. We're now going to create a new subdirectory under our home directory to host the Ansible playbooks for SAP. I use command make dir minus p run underscore playbooks ampersand ampersand cd run underscore playbooks. Now we have a location for deployment, I can run a curl command to download version 1.02 of Ansible playbooks for SAP from GitHub and uncompress the zipped file into the new subdirectory. I use command curl minus l and then the URL and pipe it through to tar. Listing out the file contents of the current directory, we can see that I have a new directory called ansible.playbooks underscore 4 underscore SAP hyphen 102. And switching into it, we can see further subdirectories. Moving into the deploy underscore scenarios directory and listing, this is where each of the deployment scenarios are stored in their own subdirectories. I'm going to choose the SAP NWAS ABAP SAP ASE sandbox directory. To get to this location from anywhere on the server, I can use command cd $home slash run underscore playbooks slash ansible dot playbooks underscore four underscore SAP hyphen 102 slash deploy underscore scenarios, followed by a slash followed by the deployment scenario name. Listing the contents of the SAP NWAS ABAP SAP ASE sandbox directory, we see some YAML files. One is called ansible underscore requirements dot YAML. This contains Ansible playbook collection requirements for this deployment scenario. There will be one of these files for each deployment scenario. We need to use Ansible's own module manager to download these requirements. I use command ansible-galaxy collection install minus minus requirements file and then the name of my requirements YAML file. After clearing the console screen, I generate a new SSH public key pair, which will be deployed by Ansible Playbooks for SAP onto the new target virtual machine once it has been deployed. The key pair is used by Ansible Playbooks for SAP to log into the target VM so that it can set up and then download the SAP software media. Let's generate the key pair. I use the SSH keygen command as follows. Notice that the target VM hostname is in the command. The output file is also named with the target VM hostname, so that if we were creating a number of these, we would not be overwriting the files. Change permissions on the file. I use command chmod. 
To define our variables for the build process, it will need us to remove unused sections of the configuration file. Before we do this, it is beneficial to create a copy of the original file and work on the copy instead. This way we can always start again if we mess up. If everything goes wrong, we can always just redeploy the Ansible playbooks for SAP entirely by re-executing our curl command that we used earlier. Let's copy the configuration file. I use the cp command. We now launch the Vi editor to edit the file. An alternative and easier to use editor is the nano editor, which I would recommend if you've never used Vi before. To edit the file with Vi, use the command Vi. To edit the file with nano, use the command nano. In nano, to save the file, use the keys control plus O, and to exit is control plus X. You can cut or, or delete a whole line in nano by using control plus K and undo the cut with control plus U. You will see these shortcuts in the nano screen at the bottom, like this example here. Editing the file, we can see that right at the top are four parameters that define the SAP system SID, the ASC database SID, the ASCS instance number, and the PAS instance number. We leave these as they are for our demo. Scroll down slightly and change the following parameters. SAP underscore VM underscore provision underscore IAC underscore type we change that to be Ansible. SAP underscore VM underscore provision underscore IAC underscore platform. We change that to MS Azure underscore VM. SAP underscore VM underscore provision underscore host underscore specification underscore plan to X small underscore NEDB underscore 32 VCPU. SAP underscore VM underscore provision underscore DNS underscore root underscore domain to whatever you've configured for your private DNS zone when you created it. We are deploying into Azure, and there's now a block of parameters specific to AWS, so we delete those lines. We also remove the block of parameters specific to GCP. Also remove the block of parameters specific to IBM Cloud. We stop when we get to the MS Azure section, as we will need to modify these parameter values. Here we change the following parameters. SAP underscore VM underscore provision underscore MS Azure underscore subscription underscore ID to our subscription ID that we saved to Notepad. And the same changes for the following parameters. They're all Microsoft Azure infrastructure related resources that we have deployed. We are asked for things like the virtual network, the subnet name, the resource groups, Changing the Bastion public IP, we use the private IP instead, because we are already inside our Azure virtual network already. We set the SSH parameters to utilize our keys that we generated. We continue down the file and now remove the block of parameters for overt, Remove the block of parameters for VMware. And near the end, we see a block of parameters for SAP software installation media downloads, which we need to adjust. Change the SAP ID user to be your SAP S user. Note that universal ID is not supported. Adjust the download directory to be slash sat mount slash software. And then we choose the template of the deployment scenario that we would like to deploy. In this case, we're doing an SAP NetWeaver ABAP stack that's 752, the base support package stack, and it's running on ASE database. To save the file in nano, use control plus O, then control plus X to exit. If you found that you may have made a mess of the file, then you can recopy the file from the original using the cp command as we did before. That's the first configuration file changed. We also need to edit ansible underscore extravars.yaml file, and this one is much more simple to do. We see in this file, it has the password definitions for the SAP system. The first thing we need to change is the software definition for our deployment scenario. We scroll down until we find the deployment scenario that we're going to use, 
Then we scroll a little further to change the value of parameters software center underscore search underscore list underscore x86 underscore 64 to update the version of SWPM as it has already been patched by SAP to a later version and the old one gets removed from the software center. I happen to know that patch level three is current in this scenario. Next, I'm flicking around the file here and I'm trying to find the xsmall underscore nedb underscore 32 vcpu item. As I mentioned, we're doing this all in the free tier and I don't want a large 32 vcpu virtual machine, so I just hack this entry to downsize it from a standard D32S v5 to just a standard D2S v5, which has only two vcpus. I almost forgot here that I need to edit the host name. I change it from NWAS01 to LSBX NWASE01. Now I scroll further down and I'm commenting out the software file system. If you remember in part one, I mentioned that the D2VM only supports four data disks. Well, with this software disk, that makes it five, so I have to remove it. It's okay though, because in the first configuration file, I specifically mentioned SatMount software as my target media location, and you can see that SatMount is still going to exist. It's in our list. That's it, we save our changes. Step 15, executing Ansible playbooks for SAP. We're now ready to execute our playbooks. I use the command ansible-playbook and I give it the ansible playbook name and pass in the two configuration files that we've modified. You can see the command adds the two configuration files to the command line here on the end. We get a lot of output whilst it executes. The virtual machine nick is created first, then the virtual machine is created and the nick is attached. At this point I got an error and the execution stopped. After some investigation and multiple runs at this, I came to know that it's a timing issue, with the VM not being ready for connection in time for the playbooks to connect to it. The later versions of the playbooks should resolve this. We simply re-execute the playbooks, and Ansible will pick up where it left off, which is really neat, and all part of the idempotent capability of Ansible. This time it passes the point of error and continues to provision the disks for the virtual machine. After some operating system setup, it's now downloading the SAP software to the SAPMount file system that it has created. If you get download errors at this point, it is likely to be that certain software versions are no longer available. You'll need to go back into the configuration file and adjust the file names after looking on the SAP Software Distribution Center to find the file name. Before it runs SWPM, Software Provisioning Manager, the playbooks are setting the operating system up to meet the prerequisites for SAP installation, otherwise SWPM will fail with errors. The software installation media is extracted. After software extraction is completed, the SWPM dark mode ini file is generated. Finally, SWPM is launched in dark mode or silent mode and the playbooks go into a polling looping wait for the SWPM to finish. My installation took until poll 78, which is 78 minutes. At the very end, you get a nice summary. The main thing to check is that you have zero failed entries. The number of OK, changed and skipped will vary depending on the tasks that were needed and whether it was re-executed at any point. I'm going to connect into the new SAP virtual machine from the Ansible virtual machine. I need to use the private key to log into the target VM because we don't know any passwords. I use command SSH minus I, the key name, and then a couple of parameters to adjust the way the SSH connection works, followed by the username and an IP address of the target VM. I'm in. I use the PS command to check what is running on the virtual machine. Hmm, lots of stuff. Let me filter that with the search string and I use the SID. I use the command ps-ef, pipe that through to grep for this SID, which is n01 in lowercase. I can see that the SAP dialog work processes are running and there is also an ASE database running. I switch into the SID ADM Linux user. Using SAP control, I can check the status of the SAP system.
the end entries show as green. All instances running normally. I can now check the ASCS instance processes. All green. I check the PAS instance. All green. I exit from the SAP virtual machine. If I now wanted to connect to SAP, I would need to open up the network security group on the subnet SNET SBX UKS01 to allow TCP ports 3201 and 3601 so that I can connect to SAP via SAP GUI. Again, I suggest you only allow from the My Computer item as the source value on the NSG inbound allow rule, just like we did when we allowed the SSH port back in part one. Don't forget that you'll also need to add a public IP address resource onto the SAP virtual machine as well as adjusting the NSG itself. And lastly, don't forget to stop both virtual machines when you are not using them as they will cost money once out of the free trial period. This concludes the Ansible playbooks for SAP demonstration. There is one more step that you might be wondering about, how to reset the process. Well, this is simple. Stop the SAP virtual machine from the Azure portal. Then we find the resource group that contains the SAP virtual machine and delete. This will take care of all items that Ansible Playbooks for SAP deployed, and you can then rerun the deployment. At the end of the practices, you can follow that same process for deleting all resource groups. You will also need to remember to remove the DNS entry that has been created by Ansible Playbooks for SAP. It's very similar to adding the entry like we did in part one, but this time it's deleting the entry for the SAP virtual machine. At the end of your practices, you can follow that same process for deleting all resource groups so that you don't get billed for anything. An empty subscription costs nothing. Summary. In part one, we created a whole Azure infrastructure to host our Azure virtual machine and some infrastructure prerequisites for our new SAP virtual machine. In part two, we set up our Ansible virtual machine to run Ansible, deployed Ansible playbooks for SAP, and then configured our deployment scenario. Finally, we executed the playbooks, which provisioned a new SAP virtual machine, downloaded the SAP software media onto it, and installed an SAP ABAP system running on an ASE database. Hopefully you have seen how easy or complex automating SAP can be. And if nothing, you may have even seen that automation can experience errors and exceptions because everything needs configuration. And sometimes the amount of configuration is quite complex. That concludes our second part. In part three, I will show how we can automate the entire end-to-end -end process. At the end, I will be able to copy and paste the code into the Azure command line interface to build and deploy the entire setup. This will give me a complete reusable demo landscape setup within minutes, which I can tear down at the end of the demo. As always, reference links are in the description down below. Drop me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.